Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I've taken some notes on my phone, so I'm going to have this right here by my side. Oh, man, I'm extremely nervous this morning. Um, this is a little different than, than going out and wrestling and competing. I've competed in front of thousands of fans, but uh, it's the first time I've ever spoke at church, especially with a testimony. So um, this morning I woke up, I was extremely nervous. I posted online on my Twitter and Facebook uh, that I was going out to give a testimony in church this morning. You know, I got a lot of great responses from uh, some of my fans and two of the things that I spoke on and uh, two verses that were able to relax me this morning. One was Matthew ten nineteen, and uh, it read, but when they have delivered you up, have no anxiety as how you shall speak or what you shall say, for at that very time it shall be given to you what to say. The second was Psalm nineteen fourteen. let the words of my mouth and the mediation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. So, uh, those are two things that I use this morning to help relax me a little bit, and um, I'm just grateful to be here. I'm thankful and, and extremely blessed. So I'm just going to start off uh, just talking about my life. Uh, I started wrestling at five years old. You know, I was uh, a little bit into the church, but neither one of my parents were necessarily Christians growing up, and uh, that was a little difficult for me at the time, but I really didn't know any better, you know. So when I would go to church as a kid, you know, I would kind of sleep, or I would bring my Game Boy and, uh, <laughs> and play my Game Boy in the pews, but I didn't actually get baptized until I was 17 years old, so I kind of had a late start in terms of uh, being delivered to Christ, and uh, the reason that I actually got baptized is because in 2005, my, father, my grandfather excuse me, actually passed away, and uh, it was kind of a blow to my family, you know, kind of hit home pretty close, and we realized that um, life wasn't, wasn't very long, you know, it was actually practically short, so got baptized at 17, but I don't think I did it for the right reasons. You know, most of the, uh, the reasons why I got baptized was just for salvation. You know, I didn't want to go to hell. I wanted to go to heaven. Um, I didn't really find a specific love for Christ. I just wanted to be, to be saved, you know, and uh, didn't completely realize that the gospel is not just means of salvation, but a means of transformation. So 2005, I was actually saved, 17 years old, went to college at the University of Nebraska, and uh, there are a lot of distractions, you know, extremely a lot of distractions, you know, between women, alcohol, you know, and parties and a lot of different stuff like that. You know, I kind of got distracted, so I strayed away from the Lord and, and uh, just thought I was doing everything on my own. You know, I thought it was by my own strength and own abilities that I was being successful at the sport of wrestling, you know, so I didn't feel as though I needed the Lord at the time. So then 2009 is when I first came back to the Lord from 17 years old, 2009, I was 21 years old. And I uh, actually made it back, made my way back, and it was because of a knee injury. So 2009, I was wrestling. Never forget the day, December 19th, 2009, I was wrestling a guy named Steve Brown from Central Michigan. And I uh, tore my LCL and PCL during the match, so I was done. Boom. Came off of being a national champion the year before. I was 35-0, and 0, undefeated, one of the best wrestlers in the nation, um, to being practically an old man. You know, I went from being a, a premier athlete to wearing a knee brace and walking around campus with crutches. So 2009, I came, became closer to God. And one of the reasons was, uh, it was, it was it's a crazy situation, crazy situation, really hard to explain, but I'm going to do my best to try. So uh, in college wrestling, there's something called a 30% rule. So after you get injured, uh, you have to have wrestled under 30% of your actual dual meets or competition schedule for that year in order to return for a medical redshirt the following year. And I had wrestled eight matches that year, and I had missed two matches that season. One was because the first week of December uh, was at the Las Vegas Invitational, Cliff Keen Invitational, and uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. And I actually, the first match of the tournament was uh, had a single leg up in the air, went to take a guy down face came down on this guy's hip, crushed two of my molars, and I had the injury to fall out of the tournament. So I was done. Boom. One match gone. Couldn't finish the tournament, so I ended up missing four or five matches that day. Then the following week, my other grandfather passed away, and I had to miss the dual meet against South Dakota State to attend his funeral in Jacksonville, Florida. And those three matches that I missed, attending the funeral and defaulting out of the tournament because of the injury to my mouth, was... Uh, the few matches actually put me underneath for the 30% rule so I could come back and compete my senior year. So it was crazy. I was one match under, one match under the 30%, which allowed me to com- come back and compete my senior year. So if that wasn't uh, a blessing in disguise, then I don't know what is. So after that, came back 
2010 through 2012 were great season. You know, I won another national title in 2011, was able to uh, make the world team in 2011, win a world championship, and then this past summer win an Olympic gold medal, which was an awesome experience for myself. But uh, like I said, I thought I was doing it all on my own. You know, the Bible calls for extreme humility, and that's something I never really had a complete grasp on. You know, I thought I did everything on my own. You know, I went out and ran the sprints. I skipped the meals. I lifted the weights. But um, God sets himself against the proud. You know, he shows favor to the humble. So that was something that I really couldn't quite grasp. And it was, it was a little different for me. You know, I thought I did everything by myself. Uh, I was actually at church service a couple weeks ago. And um, the pastor was talking about idolatry. Idolatry is basically we're made to worship people. We're made to worship something. As a, as a group, as a human being, we're made to worship. And... Uh, Obviously, God is what we want to worship, but uh, at the time, this summer, leading up to the, to the Olympic Games, to the World Championships, I think the most important thing in my life and what I made most important, what I idolized, was actually winning a gold medal. And at the time, I didn't see anything wrong with it. You know, it was something that I worked for for a number of years, something that God had granted me the power uh, to accomplish, but, you know, I didn't realize that there were many more things in life greater than winning gold medals. Right, Slay? Greater gold. Uh, so... You know, it was one thing I idolized winning the gold medal. You know, I tweeted about it every day. You know, I wasn't very humble in my approach to winning golds. You know, I was actually relatively cocky, but uh, something I'm afraid to admit. But, uh, you know, I've been humbled. I've definitely been humbled. Isaiah 42, 8 says, I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another or praise to my idols or my praise to my idols. Excuse me. So, obviously, God doesn't do well with lust, greed, and selfishness. So after the Olympic Games, you know, it was the biggest accomplishment of my career. I was feeling amazing. I had a lot of money in my bank account. You know, I had a, a lot of people around me. But as many people as I had around me and as many people wanted to be my friends, I still felt lonely. I feel, still felt an emptiness. And it was one of uh, my friends and a, a mentor I have in the back in Lincoln, Nebraska, where I compete and uh, train out of. Guy said, it's a God-shaped hole that I had in my heart, a God-shaped hole that I tried to fill with a lot of different entities, you know, cars, money, women, and uh, obviously only one thing could fill that hole, and that was Christ. You know, so through all this emptiness, I'm sitting at home, and I have my dream right here, my Olympic gold medal, and I still didn't feel complete. I wasn't fulfilled, you know, and uh, one of the things I have written down here, quoted, (laughs) is the book of Matthew. I I really enjoy the book of Matthew probably because it's one of the the few books that I've actually read in its entirety in my uh, <laughs> short walk with the Lord. But uh, it's Matthew 6.20. It says, But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. It also goes on to say in Matthew 7.13, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. And uh, that's super important to me in terms of, just knowing that there's something greater out there than just winning gold medals. Not to kind of negate the significance of, of being a champion. Um, it's great, you know, but you want to do things to, to actually glorify the Lord in terms of your accomplishments. So then, after the Olympics, one of the most important turning points uh, of my walk was I went to an FCA camp in Illinois. And uh, there were a bunch of 16-year-old kids, high schoolers, and it was FCA camp. They actually stayed there. When was there? You were there, right, Wynn? Um, it was a 24-hour camp, so basically it was a lock-in camp. And uh, I think the quote and the motto of it was getting good while getting God. And uh, the kids came, and they would go, and they would do a technique session, then they would go do a devotional. Then they would do wrestling live, and then they would do some worship. So I stayed after, and uh, after I did some technique sessions, I went in over and did uh, some of the devotionals with the kids. And just to see these young kids, young in their wrestling abilities, but growth. Their, their growth was amazing in their faith, you know, and that was kind of inspiring to me. They, those kids wanted to be me because of my abilities, but I actually wanted to be, be those guys because of their, their faith in Christ, you know, and those guys came up to me, and they were like, man, you're amazing. You know, not only are you a great wrestler, but you're extremely deep in your faith. You know, not only you have a great double leg, but you love Christ as well, and um, that was something that kind of hit home, you know, because I was like, do I really love Christ? Do I really love him for the right reasons? Growing up as a kid, I thought loving Christ was all about following the Ten Commandments. But I realized that uh, through grace, you know, it was, the law wasn't as important as, as we made it to be. I think God is more inspired by our, by our relationship with him as opposed to, 
to our actual actions. You know, and uh, at the FCA camp, I seen these kids, and I really wanted to be that guy. I wanted to be the guy that could motivate them and inspire them and not only win on the mat, but, but win in life. And I read a, a verse in Titus, Titus 2, 6 and 7. It said, in the same way, encourage the young men to live wisely in all they do. And you yourself must be an example of, to them by doing good deeds of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teaching. You know, so not only do I want to be a great teacher, not only do I want to talk about being great and tweet about being great and Facebook about being great, but I actually want to live that greatness out in, uh, in my actual daily life. So I'm big on acronyms. I have a, a great friend of mine. His name is Matt Trainer. He came out here and he uh, stayed with me for the last week. And he's huge on acronyms. And he made an acronym for gold. Since I love gold so much, he made an acronym on gold. And his, uh, his acronym was Generating Our Loving Destiny. Gold. Generating Our Loving Destiny. So not only is it an entity or a metal, but it's about generating our love and destiny and basically finding our purpose in life. You know, gold is still significant, but I don't think God is as concerned with our wins and losses, you know, but he's actually concerned with how we use them, you know. So I want to use my wrestling abilities and my accomplishments as a platform to, uh, to inspire and motivate people. You know, at the end of the day, I think God looks at us and sees perfection. You know, as we look at ourselves and we see sinful people, God looks at us and he sees Jesus, you know. And I think we're all gold medalists in God's eyes. And to close out, as a... Uh, as I've done this journey and as I've arrived at the place I am today, I recognize the difference between happiness and joy. You know, uh, happiness is fleeting. You know, it's only temporary. You know, it's that instant gratification that we receive um, when we give in the temptation, given the lust, and, uh, you know, win gold medals, you know. But at the end of the day, joy remains. You know, so I would say, I feel joy now. I feel joy every day waking up, living for Christ, doing things to, to glorify Christ, um, not only in my wrestling abilities, but in my living life. And um, I realized that happiness is what I found when I received the gold, and joy is what I found when I received Christ. And uh, that's all I got. Thanks, guys.